Hello. A really quick and out-of-sequence video this week, I'm going to be talking mostly about the console, or the command prompt, and why you see it so much in my videos. Well, I like the command prompt because it's so simple to use. I don't need to load any third-party libraries. We don't need anything for graphics or sound, as you've seen with my synthesizer videos and first-person shooter videos. We don't need complicated user input tools, and we don't need, really need to use any third-party libraries at all. And that's what I like. As, as I'm trying to deliver the algorithms and concepts to my viewers, I don't want anything to get in the way. I don't want to get anything like the boilerplate code uh, stand between me and the idea that I'm trying to present. Now the regulars will also know that I start with a blank int main function like this and simply add a while loop to represent a game loop. And you'll also know that in addition to the game loop I always add a screen buffer and use the set console active screen buffer function so I can treat the console as basically an array of pixels. And I use the function write console output character to update the screen. And we know from the first person shooter video that this happens at several thousand frames per second. And the point of this video is I am doing these things a lot. And if a programmer is doing the same thing repeatedly, then it should be wrapped up and packaged away. And so this video is uh, going to introduce a little class that I've written which does exactly that. This is just to make the future videos a little more easy to understand. So to that end, I've created a simple class called the OLC Console Game Engine. And this class does the following. First, the user can call the construct console function with a width and a height. And this specifies how many characters there are across the screen and down the screen. And we can also specify the font size in pixels. It then goes away and attempts to create a console with those properties. The class comes with a start function, which creates a thread. And this thread effectively becomes our game loop. So this replaces the while one. In fact, we can look at the thread here, and the first thing the thread does is call an onUserCreate function. And we'll see how the user does this later. The thread contains a while loop, which acts as our game loop, and it also handles some timing in the background. If you remember from some other videos, that actually we use the timing to make sure the motion is smooth and fair across different platforms. I then handle the input. Now, my other videos have always used get async key state, and this is no different, except this time I'm creating an array which stores all of the keys and it stores for that one instance of the loop. Has it just been pressed? Has it just been released? Or is the key currently held down? I then call a user function called onUserUpdate. And I pass to that the elapsed time. And finally, I update the title bar of the console and output the screen buffer, according to the parameters that we specified in the construct console function. Using the class couldn't be simpler. The first thing we need to do is include the file to actually define our base class OLC console game engine. Then I'm going to create a second class called demo, which inherits from that. So we'll just need to fill in the obvious things here, such as the constructor. And along with our constructor, we'll need to override the two virtual methods because console game engine is abstract. So to do that, I'm just going to paste in here ones I've created before. We have the on user create, where we'll load and create any resources that our game might need. Now, this is important because the thread calls this function, so the thread owns those resources. And the second function is our on user update, and this is where all the fun stuff will happen. So we get a copy of the uh, elapsed time with that function. Using the class couldn't be simpler. The first thing we need to do is construct the console. And we need to specify the width and height. So I'm going to specify 160 characters wide by 100 characters high, which is quite a large console. But I'm going to specify that the font size used is 8 by 8 pixels. And then all I need to do is call game.start. So that compiled, and we'll run it. And what we see is a bright pink console with a frame rate at the corner and some stuff in the title. Bright pink, I hear you say? What's going on? Well, that's because this class also allows the console to specify the colours of the characters. And so some of you now might get a feel for where I'm going with this. The class also includes some drawing routines. So I can draw to a specific character here with an X and Y coordinate. It uses the Unicode symbol for the character here, so this is a solid block, and we can specify the colour. By default, it's, it's bright white. And I've created some fill algorithms. I've created algorithms to draw strings to certain locations. I've got clipping algorithms because I can also draw lines. And I've just lifted the Bresnam's line algorithm direct from Wikipedia here. Nothing too special. So let's see what this can do. I'm going to add a loop within a loop here to my onUserUpdate function. So I've got a loop that scrolls through the width and height. So we're going through every character on the screen. I'm going to draw the hash symbol and I'm choosing a random colour for it. Let's see what that looks like. And there we go, and now YouTube compression will be falling apart. However, it's running at a good healthy frame rate, and uh, 
we can see that the console has been automatically sized according to the parameters that we chose. Now let's have a look at some interactivity. I'm going to create a little player which we can control with the cursor keys. So I need to store the player's position. I'm going to use floating point values and we'll use the onCreate function here to default them. In fact I'm going to default them to 10 by 10. Instead of drawing lots of random stuff to the screen, the first thing I'm going to do is clear the screen. And I'll use the fill command that I've got for that. So we're filling from the top left, uh, which would be 0, 0, and we're using the variables screen width and screen height. And I want to fill the screen with spaces. I want to blank it out, and we'll specify the colour to be 0. To represent the player I'm just going to use a simple white rectangle and to do that I'm going to use the fill function again and I'm going to use the player coordinates as the top left and I'm going to assume it's a fixed size of 5x5. Five five. We use the update function to also handle the input. Handling input is very simple indeed now because all we need to do is check the M keys array with the specific key code that we're interested in and we see its state. So if any of these keys left, right, up and down are held, we alter the player coordinates accordingly. And we can do it regardless of uh, computer performance because we're using the elapsed time to modify our values. Let's see how this works. So we can see the player white rectangle, I'm pressing the right key, it moves right. I'm pressing the left key, down key, and up key. And simultaneously, I can press keys together as well. So using this very simple framework, we can create quite compelling game demos. And we can talk about how the game works and not have to worry about how we present it to the screen. And one of the reasons I'm keen to do this, because I know some of you think, oh no, we're moving away from the simple format, is it allows me to demonstrate really cool algorithms very simply, such as this. And you'll see a lot more of this in the next video, where I'm going to be looking at mazes. And for those of you who have become accustomed to my videos, don't worry, I'll still be coding most things from scratch. Just occasionally, it helps to have some pre-built code so we can get the videos off to a quicker start. As always, the code's going to be available on GitHub, and I'll see you next time. Take care.